All right, this week on Camera Talk. Back to Japan. We like Japan, right? Especially One ticket to Tokyo, please. See for vintage lenses. We're looking at Konica. We've looked at Konica before, but this time we're looking at Konica 135. There's three of them. There's a 2.5, a 3.2, and a 3.5. Well, this is the 3.2, rumored to be the best of the three. So let's find out together if it's true or not. What do you think, Stinky? Want to get it on? Let's come on down. Here I am. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and Dylan. All right, this week on Camera Talk, we're going back to Japan and we are looking at some Konica glass. And as you know, if you've watched any of my earlier episodes about Konica, you'll know that they're, uh, you know, they were kind of the top of the line from the, from the, uh, the land of the rising sun. So, um, Konica, if you haven't heard of them before. Colors are calling me. Konica, colors are calling me. You know, maybe you're not from that era, such as Dr. Scott, or as Dylan would say, the dinosaur era. Um, with the cavemen, well, cavemen and dinosaurs didn't roam the earth together, did they? No, but in Hollywood they did, hmm. if you've seen the movies. So Konica anyway started in photography, well, in the photo world back in 1873. It's a long time ago, right? A little bit before daddy's time. And, um, you know, they progressed their way through, um, you know, through the industry, just like everybody else, uh, making a name for themselves. And, you know, they got to the point where even the Japanese government was using Konica as the standard to rate and judge other lenses by uh, other manufacturers and then they diversified off into many other things like uh, like photocopiers and, and whatnot. So uh, anyway, the, uh, the one that I have today that we're going to be talking about is uh, the 135. Now it's a Hexanon AR, which is their, their professional line, you know, the top of the line line uh, of lenses. And uh, this particular one is a, is a uh, uh, Aperture 3.2. Now they came in 2.5, much bigger and fatter than this one, and at a 3.5 which is shorter and slower than this one. So many different sizes. Now this is, you know, if you compare the, the two, or two, bad math. If you compare the three lenses, which others have done on the internet, you can easily find them through a little Google search. You'll find that the 3.2 actually outshines the other two uh, by quite a bit actually. So this is, if you're seeking a 135 from Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Konica, <laughs> then this is the one to get. Um, and they're relatively cheap too. Uh, you can get them for a hundred bucks or lower, uh, depending on how you, how you shop around. It is all metal. It's, uh, it's got a built-in hood, uh, telescoping hood. Is that something cool to play with? I can see you looking at that already. Like, wow, that is really cool. But it's kind of short. That's how you use it. So if you want to retain the contrast and whatnot, get yourself a longer hood. Um, you know, it screws in. There's all kinds of third-party hoods out there, very cheap, um, and it, and it does quite well. Now it's got an adapter on it. This is a, a KNF um, concept adapter. So it's uh, Konica AR to NEX. So I could put it on my uh, A7R2 to uh, to shoot with, and um, um, you know, again, it's great construction. It'll you know last you a lifetime um, as long as you take care of it. Of course, like anything else in life, its focus ring is nice and smooth. 
Its aperture ring is uh, clicked. It goes from 3.2 to f16. And, um, you know, again, it's a, it's a fine, fine uh, piece of glass. It's got very good image quality, uh, colors. Uh, it's very sharp, contrasty, um, no distortion or chromatic aberrations. You know, it's an all around really nice piece of glass. Now it's uh, specs on this thing are five elements in four groups. It's close focus as a meter, which may seem like, oh, a meter, that's long. Well, the 2.5 um, version is 1.2 meters and the 3.5 is 1.5 meters. So again, the 3.2 again is outshining the other two uh, in close focus area anyway. Um, and comparing to other lenses, you know, if you compare this to, to the lenses of his day, you know, the Canons and Nikons um, and, and Zeisses, again, this thing outshines them uh, in all those categories. So um, you can't go wrong uh, with this. So um, what else can I say? From 5.6 to F11, it's almost like it's uh, Apple Chromatic uh, corrected because it's just so good and to which it's obviously not the case but it, it just seems like it because of uh, the quality that uh, that Konica put into this uh, particular lens so oh, with that said um, how many bokeh blades does it have bokeh blades aperture blades does it have well uh, it has six um, but that's pretty standard for Japanese lenses of the day um, six was just the thing. So, uh, you know, you may get a little hexanonish, you know, bokeh balls as you, as you stop down, but. Oh, well, uh, 390 grams. So it's, it's not, uh, it's not super light, but it's not super luggy heavy either. You know, it's not like a Noctilux or something. So it's, you know, you can keep this on your lens all day or on your lens, on your camera all day. And shoot with it and you'd be fine right so it's great for uh, portraiture as well uh, i'll show you some shots of this guy uh he was being a little shy this week because he's uh he's got his uh what do they call that hand foot and mouth virus i know it's embarrassing isn't it so you suck you can see all these little spots on him like it makes it look like he's got chicken pox or something but uh i got to keep him home from school <coughs> That's not from you, is it? Boy's best friend is his mother. I don't blame everything on you. Anyway, so get yourself one of these. If you get an opportunity and if you like uh, vintage lenses, of course, manual focus, easily do adapt to your mirrorless um, camera system. I don't have any DSLR, so I can't really speak to that. But, um, but anyway, it's a, it's a great piece of glass. So that's my recommendation for you. Now, let me get you some shots of my Canon M50, which I use to, um, to record these videos. Now hold yourself up, mister. Don't be a lazy little man. Um, and I focus in on the, um, the end of the, the name plate, which is uh, the 15 to 45 um, kit lens that comes with the, with the Canon M50. And I focus in on the, uh, on the name plate at the end, of the, the end of the 15 to 45 EFM lens. Uh, right about there, one, two, three. Uh-huh. Does that look good? I think it looks good. That was at 3.2. Let's do 5.6 just to show you what that could look like as well. Um, right about there, looks good. One, two, three. All right. So, um, so that's what it looks like from about, you know, a meter, 1.75 meters away. Um, ooh, it's got a life of its own. So let's, um, get you some shots of this guy just to show you what that looks like. So here's Dylan at 3.2. And how about some random stuff? I'm gonna do some random stuff that we uh, also use this lens for. 
uh, it could be landscape, cars, trees, butterflies, flowers, you name it. This thing's good for everything. So let's give you some shots of random stuff. Okay, so I think that was about it for the lens, all I really want to talk about. So let's talk about, how about we talk about our, uh, our uh, photo editing software that we use is Luminar. Luminar AI, Luminar Neo. Um, you know, it's got all kinds of great bells and whistles, lots of artificial intelligence. We like the artificial kind, right? Oh, uh, I don't want to talk about it. Um, yeah, it's excellent, isn't it? So it's only 70, oh no, 80 bucks. Um, and it's yours for life. And if you click below, click below, you'll get $10 discount in the link down below. Uh, if you buy it through that, you'll get $10 discount. And we get a little kickback from that too, right? We like kickback. Yeah, kickback. And Dylan can save up his money to buy more cookies. So, um, other than that, you're also supporting Skylum, who produces um, Luminar. <clears throat> They're located in Ukraine, and everybody knows what's going on there. So, you know, any little support we can give for them helps them out as well. So, I think that was it for that. Now, how about you support our channel? Subscribe, right? And Dylan going to do one on this side? How about you subscribe? Uh-huh. And how about all four fingers? Your fingers and my fingers together? One, two, three. Subscribe. Oh, you're supposed to point. Subscribe. Yeah, there you go. And what else does YouTube like besides subscribers? They like the thumbs up, right? Thumbs up. And then we can show you the thumbs up girls who also support Dylan and his love of the thumbs up too. So thumbs up. Thumbs up. And I think that was about it. Right? Yeah. So who are we? Well, we are Modesty Photography. And we're here to talk about tips and tricks of photography and, you know, lenses and cameras and and Dylan and anything else. I can never forget Dylan. Um, yeah, so, you know, why should people come back every week to see us? Why? Because you belong here. That's right. And where do they belong, Dylan? This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and Dylan. That's right. And Dylan. He's going to get his own show someday, but for now, you got to ride the coattail on daddy's show all right so thanks for dropping by thanks for paying attention thanks for supporting us dylan says thank you for putting up with his uh his it's not monkey pox but something similar what the fuck? all right so we'll see you next week right every friday a new video comes out so let's say bye-bye all right bye-bye here i am Always good.